Last week, we took a closer look at the 7800X 3D, one of, if not the perfect, gaming CPU as of now. But it had a little problem. It wasn't performing particularly well in all, let's say, harder workflows. As far as editing, rendering, whatever is concerned, you would be better off with a 7700X. But what if we took a high-end, high-core clock high core count chip and we sprinkled some of that 3D vcache magic on top of it. Well, that's the 7950X 3D, the one that is supposed to be the best of both worlds. Good at working and good at gaming. Inside we'll find 16 cores and 32 threads, boosting up to 5.7 GHz from the original 4.2 GHz base clock all powered by an AM5 socket with a rated TDP of 120 watts and a heat spreader that will leave you damaged once you get to clean it. Unlike the 7800X 3D, we got a 2CCD design inside the 7950X 3D like we had on the 7900 and 7950X. However, things changed a bit left and right, like the fact that not both CCDs have that additional L3 cache and thus one of the two CCDs, or eight of the cores, will run slower than the other half. Now, this is an issue, of course it is, but AMD got a solution, but I just don't believe it to be a good one. There is a whole blog post and numerous guides provided by AMD and independent outlets that guide you through this, and the bottom line is, Having Xbox Game Bar installed or enabled, having Windows Gaming Mode enabled, whatever the hell that does, and making sure that you got the newest AMD chipset drivers installed so that the special background tasks can run in the background. And what this essentially does is register when Xbox Game Bar is triggered and if so, make sure to redirect the, the gaming related stuff onto the CCD that has the 3D cache giving you a much better gaming performance and if that is not the case then allow the whatever CCD to do the job to get that 7950X level of work performance. And all of this sounds fine, but allow me to walk you through how this experience went for us. We used the chip in combination with a Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master and two sticks of 16 gigs G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo running at 6000 using Expo and an RTX 4090. All the BIOS settings were set to default and we only enabled Expo. At this point, it's also important to mention that it was a fresh version of or a fresh install of Windows, no drivers were present beforehand and we made sure to install the latest BIOS version provided by Gigabyte. You know, to be sure that nothing exploding is happening. From there we went onto AMD's website, almost downloaded the wrong thing because I just typed 7950X3D instead of going through the list and no, this is adrenaline, this installs the iGPU drivers, not the drivers needed to properly utilize the 3D cache. Anyway, once we went through the list and selected the X670E chipset drivers, we installed it and started our set of benchmarks. The problem, however, was that the CPU was running at 4.7 GHz all core. The results were completely tanked to the point of a 77 or even a 7600X. It generated horrible numbers overall, except for, for uh, temperature. The temperature was amazing. Anyway, the second CCD, the one that is supposed to push you up in uh, high workloads was basically in gaming mode and did little to nothing. We made sure that Xbox bar is on and Windows gaming mode is enabled and, and all of that but nothing helped. Then we reinstalled the chipset drivers again and again and again but we did not notice that these two tasks which were supposed to be running once we installed the drivers were present at all. Adding to that, every damn time I installed those chipset drivers, my motherboard decided that it doesn't want to work anymore and I had some error code which was just mentioned as reserved and nothing. And then every time I needed to reset BIOS, go back into BIOS, disable Expo, boot it up once, boot it down, boot it back up, enable Expo and boot it completely back up just to see that the two tasks were still not present. After a few days of trial and error, I decided to give the 7950X 3D a short break 
and switch it up for the 7800X3D and start with that one. However, it was tanked to the exact same 4.7 GHz on all of its core, even on a single core workload. So I knew something was completely off and I suspected that maybe the BIOS update we had done sometime beforehand had something to do with it. And yes, after reverting to the oldest BIOS available on Gigabyte's website, the 7800X3D boosted to exactly what we expected. Then after switching back to the 7950X3D, we also got the numbers that looked like uh, at least some how related to the stuff that AMD writes on their website. And of course, the two tasks suddenly appeared. In the end, the whole issue became a large black box for me. I don't know if something went wrong during the first BIOS update or if the BIOS version has some sort of an issue with, with these 3D chips. I just don't know and I would love to investigate that, but it's Friday right now and I need to send these chips back to Tech Mama in the Netherlands on Monday morning, so there is just not enough time for that and the little time I have left I got to spend benchmarking the crap out of these. Anyway, this brings me to the issue I have with how all of this works. The BIOS or the board does something, from there it triggers Windows Xbox or whatever mode Windows invents now and then that triggers the AMD drivers which are then assigning the game to the better performing cores. The first problem is that AMD just counts on Windows working perfectly fine which isn't really like the wisest step. It's not like Windows isn't known to create issues where there weren't any before and you know blue screen randomly. But my big problem is that there is nothing telling you that it works. Sure you have these two tasks that somehow show up or don't show up when everything is working but is it really? I made sure that it works because I had the possibility to compare the numbers to all the other outlets and because it's my job to make sure that the numbers are correct, but, but let's say I'm the average guy. I have this motherboard, I do the BIOS update, I install this chip and I install the drivers. If I don't know that something is wrong or if all I wanted to do is a plug in and play solution, I would have never noticed that something is off. I would still have had great performance because of my 4090, but the chip would have been tanked to a standstill without me even noticing. And I think this is stupid and it can lead to the average guy not getting what he paid for. And I think this is an issue and the solution is actually quite simple. These tasks are simply not enough. Existing is not enough. What I believe needs to happen is some sort of a minimalistic program, a really minimal one that is going to get installed with the drivers and the only job of that program would be to check if all of the random Windows stuff is enabled and check if they can be triggered and assign the right processes to the appropriate cores. And then a big fat green text saying it works. And as long as that isn't shown, it is not working. That's what I would have expected. That would be an all a, a one-click check so that a person who doesn't know how quickly that chip is supposed to run, so that he knows that everything is working fine, instead of just hoping for the best. Yeah, I, I had a great week. Anyway, thank you for letting me blow off some steam and let's get to the numbers. First off, let's talk power consumption. In a Cinebench multi-core loop, we were seeing a total package consumption of 143 watts. That's a significant reduction from the 226 watts that we observed on the 7950X. This then translates into a way easier cooling setup, where the 7950X was already hitting that 95 degrees C in Cinebench, the 7950X3D was sitting at a cozy 84 degrees C on the die. And if we quickly have a look at the list of coolers that can potentially manage both of these, it's only natural that you have a way bigger pool of coolers to choose from when going for the 3D variant even if it's TJ Maxx is 6 degrees C lower at 89 degrees C. In Cinebench single core, the 7950X3D actually came out as the big winner. 
this theoretically should not be the case. However, we observed that our 7950X 3D was able to peak slightly higher than our non-3D variant. Can be related to the BIOS downgrade that we had to do, but it doesn't have to. In multi-core Cinebench, things change back to how they were supposed to be, with the 7950X 3D being slightly behind the regular one. In CPU-Z single core, we saw all the 3D chips fall quite behind significantly, with every regular one outperforming them. In multi-core, it's back to normal, with the 3D chips being just slightly behind the regular ones. In 3D Max CPU profile, we can observe how the performance stacks up when doubling the amount of threads. Where in the very beginning our 7950X 3D was able to beat everyone, even if just slightly, the difference started to become smaller with every doubling, up until the moment where the regular one took over and created a bigger gap with every doubling. And something that seems interesting here is the difference between 8 threads and 16 where both the 7950X and 7950X 3D performed virtually identical up until this point, they had a significant difference later on and my assumption here is that the 3D driver is doing its job and assigning the benchmark to the faster cores which are pretty much a carbon copy of the regular 7950X's ones. But afterwards, there are just no regular cores left anymore and the performance hit from the lower clock speed 3D cores hits kinda hard. Seems like the driver is working fine. In Passmark, we saw something quite unique. Unlike the 7800X 3D and 7700X, the 7950X 3D won against the non-3D counterpart. And in PC Mark 10, we are back to normal with the 7950X being slightly in front of the 3D variant. Moving on to rendering and encoding workloads. Transcoding a H.264 file into H.265 took just minimally longer for the X3D chip. A difference we also saw in Blender where the X3D chip produced slightly lower numbers all across the board. As a last non-gaming related benchmark we have Corona 10, where again the 7950X3D produced slightly fewer rays per second compared to the regular deal. And this opens up the floodgates for positive benchmarks favoring the 7950X3D. Thanks to the 3D vCache bump, we can see the same increase in performance that we saw coming from every other 3D chip. In 3D Mark Time Spy, we saw a slight bump in performance. But as soon as we go to actual gameplay, the difference becomes immediately noticeable. In Dota 2 we saw a gain of over 100 FPS on the average min and max FPS counter and for the 1% lows it was only 30 but still 30 is quite a lot. The only difference would be the 7950X's higher 0.1% lows. In Rainbow Six Siege, same thing, only this time we also include the 0.1% lows every metric gained between a bit and a lot. In Far Cry 6, same thing again, 7950X 3D dominated the regular 7950X. And in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, again same thing, every metric growing by a bit or by a bit more. The only game that doesn't follow this trend is CSGO. Here, although the 7950X managed to keep an average of 892 FPS, 892 FPS, what the heck? It did not manage to beat the 7950X. CSGO just doesn't like the cache at all. So where does this leave us? Well, exactly where the 7800X 3D was. The 7950X 3D is the gaming performance upgrade over a 7950X that will cost you another 100 euro extra. As of now, it's going for around 680 euros here where I live, and that's not cheap, not at all. But it does create a very unique spot for its existence. The 7950X 3D is basically the chip if you are building a PC that is for both working and gaming. If it's only for working, no need, you are better off with the 7950X for sure. If it's only for gaming, the performance benefit of going for a 7950X 3D instead of the 7800X 3D are basically none. And that's basically it, it's a hybrid. 
the performance penalty going 3D in work-related tasks is small enough to ignore it in favor of the huge performance bump in gaming performance. It's the perfect hybrid in my opinion. It consumes a lot less power than the regular 7950X, it is a lot easier to cool down, but it does cost 100 euros more right now. The only thing I really wish they changed and that they can do after the fact is the whole software dependency thing. I do not like being software dependent at all, especially if there is no way of being 100% sure that it works without digging too deep. Windows and AMD do not have the best trust me bro rating after all. Anyway, I think this should be all for today. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but will also serve to hire a canceller to bring CSGO and AMD's 3D cache back together. Something happened there and they need to figure things out and find a way to like each other again. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at the series where we built the new Radiator Fan Testing Machine. It was a fun ride. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.